Today we're continuing our discussion of circuits, but we're going to move beyond capacitors and start just talking about circuits in general. And we're going to talk about a big part of that, which is resistance. We're going to start with talking about what a battery is, what that does, but we're going to define resistance. We're going to understand current. We're going to go through all these things. And then we're going to talk about real batteries and then Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law. So moving forward, batteries and wires. With a battery, that's what a battery is. It is a source of EMF, and we use a capital sigma for that. That is electromotive force. Essentially, what this does, it, well, <clears throat> it's a source. of voltage it pushes charges so if we take our battery attach it to a wire and this is a big cross-section of wire that we have what we're gonna see is that well, that's my positive voltage side and that's my negative voltage side what we're gonna see when we attach to that is we have positive voltage here and zero voltage down here and what that's gonna give me is inside of this thing an electric field that points from positive voltage towards descending voltage electric field now this electric field is going to take whatever charges are in here I'll make them green so we have a negative charge right there this can experience a force in that direction and accelerate in that direction that's what current is It's essentially the movement or flow of charge. And, and we have a problem because conventional current moves from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery, which means that in the view of conditional current, positive particles move. And we know that's not true. It's false. You can thank Benjamin Franklin for that. But conventional current, I, that's what we use for current, goes opposite the direction that an electron moves. And again, Benjamin Franklin came up with it a long time ago. We haven't changed it. It's just tradition. It's terrible. We know that it's false. So, current is the flow of charge. And essentially, inside of here, there's a bunch of junk. We put up this electric field, and all of the charges inside my wire move like a Plinko board, like the, like the disc moving through a Plinko board, moving through all that junk. That junk is something that we're going to call resistivity. And we use a row for resistivity. And this one, honestly, to me, makes a little bit of sense. Now, here's the idea behind this. If I have a resistor, and any kind of wire is a resistor, and that wire has a very large cross-sectional area, or any cross-sectional area A and length L, okay, the larger that cross-sectional area, the more charge is allowed to get through. So the resistance of any given resistor is inversely proportional to the area. The more area I have, the smaller resistance to the flow of charge I have. The more flow of charge I'm going to get. And the longer this thing gets, the more Plinko pegs we get in the way. We get more resistance with more length. So the resistivity for any wire is the length of that wire divided by the area of the wire times this resistivity thing, which just tells me that for any given volume, I have a certain amount of junk in the way of my charges moving. Now, 
this kind of sets up the whole Ohm's law thing. Ohm's law tells me about current in terms of resistance and voltage. Current is the voltage divided by the resistance. If I have more voltage, my charges are going to be pushed harder. They're going to move faster. So I get more current. If I have more resistance, there's more stuff in the way. It's going to slow down how they move through my resistor. That's the basics of everything. This thing right here is called Ohm's Law. And speaking of ohms, resistance, R, is measured in ohms. We use an omega for that. Ohms and omega. It's a capital omega. And all of this should be sort of familiar from last year. So, moving um, more forward with Ohm's Law. We can write it in multiple ways. V equals IR. I equals V over R. That's what we've talked about before. Or resistance equals voltage divided by current. What Ohm's Law does is tell me how charges move through a circuit. So very simple circuit. We have a battery. We have a wire, which carries my current. We have a resistor. The battery is a source of EMF. That's my voltage. The resistor here is a source of resistance. And the current, which we've already discussed, conventional current flow, moves this way through the resistor. Now, inside of this, it's chock full of electrons. They're all moving at a constant rate. The current on one side of the resistor is the same as the current on the other side of the resistor. In a single loop of wire, current is constant. That's good to know. We don't have more current on one side of the resistor than we do on the other. The current is just the charges moving through. Every bit of this Every bit of this circuit is chock full of electrons. It's like a traffic jam. And the traffic's going to move at the same speed. If I push harder here, it just means I'm, I'm forcing more stuff through here. Now, if I increase the resistance, that's going to make things slow down at this point, which slows down the entire thing. The way things move through this, I have more energy here. And as my charges move through my resistor, they lose energy, and I have less. And this is something that we're going to talk about more and more as we get into Kirchhoff's laws, and it's going to make a little bit of sense. Now, what happens here at the resistor is that we lose energy. And we lose energy since this is a rate, charge per unit time. We lose energy at a rate given by the power of the energy that we lose is equal to the current times the voltage. That gives me the right units. Um, if current is charge in coulombs over time in seconds times volts, which is joules per coulomb, that comes out to, well, coulombs goes away, watts. That's power. What this is telling me is energy loss per second. That's how Ohm's Law works. That's how Ohm's Law tells me all these things. So the two formulas that we really need to know for this is P equals IV and V equals IR. Now, a real battery. It turns out that real batteries, instead of just being a source of EMF, also have a tiny bit of resistance in them. So that any time I hook up a real battery to a circuit, it has a tiny resistance. We call it an internal resistance. As long as that internal resistance is small, it's not really going to affect the entire circuit. But when they get to be about the same size, we can see a difference. But this internal resistance if I just hooked up a battery to itself, what's its internal resistance? 
this thing being the battery with the source of EMF and the internal resistance, the current I would be equal to my um, voltage, which is a fairly big number, divided by my tiny internal resistance. That would give me a big current and looking at power, if power is I times V, my, my current times my voltage, if I now have a big current, or, or another, uh, another way to think about it, um, if I is equal to V over R, power is going to be that voltage squared divided by the resistance. If that resistance is small, that's going to be a huge amount of power. We're going to lose a huge amount of energy. That's how we short circuit a battery. This idea of internal resistance is just something that we're going to have to remember as, as we start doing things. Okay, so the meat of what we really need to learn today so that we can move on to things are Kirchhoff's rules. We have rule one, which is the loop rule, and rule two, which is the node rule. We've already talked about the consequences of these things before. In the loop rule, that says I've got my battery, EMF. Let's say we have one resistor, two resistors, and then we're back here. As I add up voltages, from here I gain the EMF of the battery minus the voltage I lose across resistor 1 minus the voltage I lose across resistor 2. If I add all of that stuff up, it must come out to 0. 0 equals the EMF of the battery minus the voltage across resistor 1 minus the energy, the voltage we lose across resistor 2. This is another way of saying that voltage in series adds. So Kirchhoff's loop rule tells me I have to lose all of the voltage of the battery before I come back around to this side of the battery. I'm going to dump it all over these resistors. So if I have multiple resistors, I'm going to drop off a little bit, drop off a little bit more, drop off the rest of it. The node rule says that in any split of wire, that's my split of wire, for any split in wire, the current in has to be equal to the current out. Or, or in this case, the total current is equal to current 2 plus current 1. It just splits. I don't get more current or less current. My current just splits. Current is like charge, but in this case, current in parallel adds. Just like with uh, capacitors where the charge in parallel adds. Here, current in parallel adds. Now, what I'm going to want, well, let's look at what this means for series and parallel circuits. We've done this, we've done this before. So let's erase this. We have our loop rule. Let's erase this. We have our loop rule and we have our node rule. Loop rule and node rule. Loop rule and loop. Loop rule and node rule. So, in a series circuit, we have a battery with our EMF. Resistor 1, we'll just do 2. Resistor 2. Now, from Kirchhoff's loop rule, we said that the EMF of the battery was equal to the voltage lost across resistor 1 minus the I mean, plus the voltage lost across resistor 2. And since I have one piece of wire, I know that that total current is the same through each resistor. What this allows me to do is plug in Ohm's law. So I'm going to plug Ohm's law into this. Tell me that total current 
times total resistance is equal to current 1 times resistance 1 plus current 2 times resistance 2. Now, because I know all the currents are equal, they completely cancel out, and I see that total resistance is equal to resistance 1 plus resistance 2. That is for a series circuit. Parallel is different. And in parallel, we're going to use that handy dandy node rule. So here's my EMF. But this time, we got resistor 1 in parallel here. And resistor 2 in parallel. And because I'm using that node rule, I know that the total current is equal to current 1 plus current 2. When they split here, my total current splits evenly between resistor 1 and resistor, not evenly, but completely between resistor 1 and resistor 2. But just like we talked about with capacitors, anything attached to the positive V side of this battery is charged to positive voltage. And anything attached down here is zero voltage. If we wanted to use the loop rule again, as we go around this loop once, we must lose all of our voltage. So we start off with positive voltage. We lose it all across resistor 1 and come back to 0 at the end here. The same thing is true for the second loop. We have to start off with that voltage and lose it all across resistor 2. In each of those loops, I'm dropping off the same amount of voltage. So we can say that the EMF of the battery, the total EMF here, is equal to voltage 1 is equal to voltage 2. Again, I'm going to substitute Ohm's law. This time, I know that I is V over R. So, I total is V total over resistance total. And that's equal to uh, V1 over resistance 1 plus voltage dropped across resistor 2 over resistor 2. And because I know the voltages are constant, they all cancel out. And I have this weird 1 over R total is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. This is a little bit different from what we saw with capacitors, but this is how resistors add in parallel. 